Hi, welcome back. In the last section, we looked at observables and promises. In this section, we're going to look at the built-in Angular services. We're going to start off by learning what the HTTP module is. Then we're going to learn how we can connect to an API. In our case, we're going to connect to the Open Weather Map API and then fetch some data in 4.3. In 4.4, we're then going to look how we can use the API to query weather by city. And we're going to finish up by styling the application with Angular Material. So welcome to 4.1, HTTP module. In this video, we're going to start off by taking a step back and looking at what the HTTP protocol is. And then we're going to look at how the HTTP client module works in Angular. So what is the HTTP protocol? Well, the HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it's the foundation of the World Wide Web as we know it. It was developed by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 at CERN, and it was hosted on his next computer. Next being the company that Steve Jobs founded when he was fired from Apple in the 80s. The software that was developed at CERN was made public in 1993. It was made open source. So that essentially allowed the internet as we know to be created. Prior to that, it was developed simply for scientists sharing information between labs worldwide. So how about we have a look at the first ever website? So this was the first ever website. As you can see, there are lots of links there underlined in blue and that's really the foundation of the web pages where you can click and go to other areas as modern developers though i bet you're very happy that angular is here so this is how http works essentially you have a client in our case angular from that client it makes a request it goes to an api in this section we're going to use an open source api called open weather map to get weather data but this could be any api and that request is then forwarded from the api it queries a database and then returns the response and the API then forwards the response on to the client. This is the way it works all over the web. The only difference with the HTTP module in Angular is that it's expecting a response of type JSON. So Angular provides a module called HTTP client and that's what we're going to use to access APIs on the web. There are essentially two kinds of APIs. APIs that are built on the fetch API and APIs that are built on the XML HTTP request API, as it is with Angular's case. So the HTTP client module sits on top of this API, and the benefits of having this module is that it makes the requests and responses more testable. It sends in a type request and receives a typed response. It allows us to use observables, and it has streamlined error handling. The HTTP client exposes a number of different methods, the primary being get, which is getting data, post, which is adding data to a database, put, which is the update method, if you wanted to update an object, and delete, which will delete something from our database. Now you might be familiar with these methods if you've ever used anything like jQuery or another front-end framework. The verbs are sometimes a little bit different. For example, here we've got put instead of update. I personally think update is better, but essentially the methods stay the same. Now, if you remember back to the last section, we talked about observables and how observables can provide a stream of data that can be updated over time. It might return multiple values, for example. The HTTP client module actually curtails that a little bit. It ensures that only a single value observable is returned. So if you subscribe to the observable, it's going to return one piece of data and then the observable is going to complete so there'll be nothing else to come. But even though that's the case, it's still an observable and we still need to subscribe. In some of the following videos, we're going to do this practically. But here I just want to show you how we can use the HTTP client module. First of all, like any module, as we've imported previously, we need to import the HTTP client module in our app.module.ts file. And then to work with the HTTP client, we need to import the HTTP client in our service. And these both come from at angular common http. Optionally, in your service, you can also import http headers from angular common http. And that will allow you to send in headers with your requests, such as requesting a specific content type, or possibly to send in API keys or anything that your API accepts. So here's just an example of a http header. You create a const, and then you send in a new http headers. In this example, we're sending in the content type of application JSON. And that's just saying that we're sending in the content type of application JSON. We might use this when we know our API is going to return JSON. We might use this when we're posting an object to an API. 
and we know that that object is of type JSON. So in this video, we've learned a little bit about HTTP and how the HTTP client works with Angular. 